Rolex. It's the name that's synonymous with luxury and excellence. It has a distinctly profound impact on the watch industry. The brand originated with Hans Wilsdorf and his brother-in-law. At that time, they were basically constructing watches and distributing watches throughout the world. Uh, it wasn't until 1908 that the name Rolex first appeared, and the name, it's really just a word that was easy to say, and that's why they decided to use it. It was also easy to put on dials and put on case backs and on movements. So the name Rolex essentially was created out of nothing. Uh, it's not a name of somebody that existed. It's not a part of a family. It's just a word. So in 1910 and 1914, the first Rolex watches were subjected to rigorous chronometric testing. And for wrist watches, it basically set the standard for what we know today. In 1926, the first Oyster case was produced, and the Oyster case was the first waterproof and dustproof watch created. It was a hermetically sealed case, and it was used as uh, the foundation for what we know as modern Rolex. And in fact, that point in Rolex history might be the foundation of what we know as sort of the modern watchmaking world. From there, in 1931, Rolex patented the first perpetual automatic caliber in a wristwatch. In 1945, Rolex introduced the Datejust, which was the first wristwatch to display the date. The 1950s saw the introduction of the Submariner, the Explorer, the GMT Master, which was the first pilot's watch to indicate two different time zones, the Milgauss, which was your first real anti-magnetic watch up to 1,000 Gauss, and those watches are still in the collection today. By 1963, we saw the introduction of the Daytona Cosmograph, which today stands alone as probably the single most desirable watch in the world. In 1967, we saw the introduction of the Sea Dweller, and it was the first true dive watch, uh, waterproof up to a thousand meters. Jump ahead quite a bit to 1985, the introduction of 904L stainless steel, which had not been used in watchmaking up until that point. It's a extraordinarily hard stainless steel, good luster, and used uh, exclusively by Rolex. In the 2000s, you saw a lot of important changes. Most importantly, it's the introduction of a product line that was all in-house. Everything was being manufactured at the Rolex facilities in Switzerland. In 2005, Rolex introduced Cerachrome, which is used on the bezels of a lot of their existing sports models, including the GMT Master II and the Submariners, both the date and non-date references. As of 2018, we have really unbelievable product. You have the new Daytonas with the ceramic bezels, you have, as of 2018 Basel World, the GMT Master II Pepsi bezel on the Jubilee bracelet, and you've got the Sky Dweller, which is the first complicated sports watch Rolex has ever produced. You also have the Date Just, the Day Dates, Presidentials, pieces that are classic Rolex staples here in 2018, just as they were in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. I'm John, and that's a brief history of Rolex.